Hello and welcome to our weekend edition of The Tube. We missed you from yesterday. No, really, we really, really missed you. I'm happy to be joined in studio by Tube editor Yaron Ten Brink and I24 News tech correspondent Shai Ringo. Good evening, guys. How are you today? Fine. Very Yeah, good week. Good week, all right. Okay, so we're going to start the day. We're going to talk about a little YouTube action. YouTube sure came a long way from being just a site that hosts videos to being the world's biggest channel. Now YouTube is taking another step forward. YouTube revealed the subscription service that will encompass not only all the video content they have to offer, but music from Google as well. With YouTube Red, users will pay a monthly fee to be able to view the vast majority of YouTube content without advertisements. Check it out. Guys, I'm scared to death they're going to be taking away our YouTube. I hope they don't do anything too drastic, but what are their chances against something like Spotify or Apple? How do you see that? Uh, there, there's a big chance they'll, uh, they'll do great with uh, YouTube Red because um, they are branding it to people who really like YouTube and not just, you know, uh, us regular people who usually uh, use YouTube to see clip here, clip there, but people who are regularly entering YouTube to see their favorite stars and their favorite channels and they have stars who grew up in, on YouTube and they'll want to see more from them. So uh, YouTube is doing great by um, a first, the first thing they do is go to those kind of crowds, millennials. Okay, will people pay for this though? That's the question with all these kind of services. Will people actually pay? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I love YouTube. I use it frequently. I use it daily. I use it to walk, to, to listen to music. I use it for work. I use it for many different reasons. And I really like using it for free. And I think that's going to be a problem convincing people to actually pay up $10 a month uh, for something they, uh, they are used to uh, not paying for. Uh, I think that if there is some kind of added value like Apple Music and Spotify are really trying to create for their own users, I might think about it. And if uh, they start aggressively uh, changing the free service to try and push me into uh, paying, then I would probably reject it and find uh, an alternative. Yeah, see, this is why I'm shuddering, because God forbid they should take away the free version yeah. of it. But I do hear that they are putting a lot of money into uh, original content, like yeah. with Netflix. So will that be the end goal, or no, it's, it's going to be a different kind of goal for them uh, to try to uh, put up shows just like Netflix. They are doing some crazy stuff. I don't think uh, most of them will not work at the beginning. Like, like the new PewDiePie Yeah, show. they're giving a PewDiePie hmm. a lot of money and they t uh, he's teamed up with the uh, producer of The Walking Dead. Uh, Ooh, to make it, yeah to make a horror show now horror series horror series yeah. now PewDiePie is cute and everybody likes him but he does one thing and one thing good and it's the let's play video uh, videos so I don't know if it's uh, going to work for him to write a new show um, and they're doing like uh, documentaries and about uh, celebrities and musicians uh, it, they're going to try a lot of things, and Google, they can try a lot of things. They have the money to do that. Would you pay for this service? Uh, at the beginning, no. I'm going to wait and see how it turns up to be. Uh, and they, they have uh, a chance to convince me. Unlike services like Tidal, who needs to convince me right from the launch, YouTube has uh, the luxury to still be very usable for uh, someone like me and maybe yeah maybe sometime they'll convince me to pay yeah i mean i still need to be convinced we'll see what happens 
Okay, so it seems more and more companies are trying to reinvent the way we drive with individually specific vehicles. For example, Israel industrial designer Kobe Shikar has come up with the concept of a parcel delivery drone. The transwheel delivery drone is a sensor-packed motorized unicycle that Shikar says can be earthbound alternative to Amazon's future plans to use drone for package deliveries to your front door. And she only unveiled a two-wheeled self-balancing scooter that travels almost 22 kilometers between charges. Watch it before we discuss the two-wheel future that is upon us. These things really look really futuristic. I actually, not only have I seen a few in Tel Aviv, I actually saw a gang of them uh, in San Francisco. It was like six or seven kids all riding down the street with it. Where did this innovation come from? And how come we're seeing so much push into this world now? Um, because more and more people live in urban areas and they'll need a better transportation and cars and trains and buses cannot uh, uh, be of service to a lot of people in a lot of urban areas and this is why we're seeing you know like we talked about we'll talk about back to the future and the hoverboard uh, and and there's uh, this uh, idea that one day i'll just take two wheels and uh, drive from a to b even if it's only 15 20 kilometers per hour it's still very fast but the, the point is this field is so undeveloped i mean if you look at the way we came these last hundred years let's say we have advanced and advanced and advanced but a bike is still a bike you know right. it's basically the same thing cars have not changed that much either so i think uh what we're seeing now also in the automobile industry is this great push from uh, tech companies to kind of make it the new frontier for computers and we've seen this Xiaomi thing this this new Segway that they're producing that's a $300 device and you can operate it with your smartphone you can actually use it to carry your bag and you know kind of uh, roll behind you and uh, it's a brilliant thing and uh, when the Segway came out everybody said this might be a big revolution but it was expensive and you looked stupid riding yeah. it it was very cheesy. And, and now you have this mini nine bot thing, and it's e cheap, it's easy to use, and it's kind of cool. It's and, still yeah. not that easy to use, and it's not that comfortable, and a lot of people are going to fall off. Of See, that's, that's why I want to ask, is this just more just to set a new trend? I mean, will something like this actually take? Because I have an electric bike, it seems practical. But will something like this, without hands, will something like this stick? I think so. Passing? I think it might. You know, you, you never know. But when you see so, mu so much innovation going on and this transwheel concept, this Israeli concept of a uh, delivery drone on, on one wheel, it's brilliant. So uh, even if this does not happen, something similar eventually will because this has to develop i mean the big problem is not the innovation uh, right now is the regulation yes that's yes. that's the big problem yeah. the big that's problem true. is that cities and countries do not understand how to uh, uh, instead of just uh, running away from those innovations try to uh, make them more usable in the cities and that's why uh, everybody is uh, looking at the electric bike as a dangerous thing it should be uh, uh, something that will make us uh, make a city better yes. and not worse. The only thing is that they have to definitely regulate it because the electric bike, should it be on the sidewalk, should it be on the yeah. street, it's kind of a bike, but it's also kind of like a fast-moving vehicle, yeah. so it remains yeah, to be seen. Yeah, in Tel Aviv, it's a real menace. It's, it's a real danger to the public. I, I'm probably one of those bad boys breaking the rules, so I'll try not to. All right, guys, this week we celebrated the Back to the Future Day. It was amazing. It was finally October 21st, 2015, the day Marty McFly flies to from the past. 
which means this is it, the end of all those annoying pranks. This is the real date. So to celebrate the event, a lot of companies tried to make their own viral videos, stealing the fun and soul of the movie's fans. So let's check Burger King's contribution before we weep for our lost childhood. Have a good one, guys. Uh, we're never gonna find seats. Seats? Where we're going, we don't need seats. You're joking. <laughs> Introducing the Burger King Hover Tray, the first tray that defies the laws of gravity. That's fake. No, it's the future. With the Hover Tray, you'll never have to carry your tray again. Plus, you can enjoy your meal, even if you can't find a seat. But if you already have a seat, it's pointless. Totally. But it's cool. Yeah, you got me. And some fans will even return from afar to enjoy it. The Hover Tray, coming soon to Burger King. Okay, guys, I have to admit, I am... I watched Back to the Future at least one million times. I made my grandfather watch it with me every single weekend. I am obsessed with it. But has the world taken it too far with all the commercialization? Have they kind of like exploited, you know, this special day for us? Yeah, you know, it's like, um, it's exactly what's going on in Hollywood where they cannot make new franchise, so they'll take old franchise and make a, a, a sequel, prequel, all those things. So instead of doing sequels for Back to the Future, they uh, selected the date and made it into a commercial uh, celebration and a lot of companies went into it and uh, the studio, Universal Studio, made a lot of money because of it, just because the day was the day, the 21st uh, of October. So do you think some of this is very cynical or some of it is fun? Like Doc and Marty were in a restaurant having fun. Was yeah, that... I, mean, I mean the Toyota uh, video with uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox is kind of heartwarming because you really enjoy watching these two guys talking together and, and, and they're reminiscing and they're like taking this retrospective look and it's kind of nice and the Burger King thing is funny uh, the Pepsi Pepsi are doing a real drink that looks like the back to the future drink that's also fun but when all this adds up together you know this day it was supposed to be our day the fans day and it became this kind of really commercial celebration uh, which for me you know, I don't want to uh, uh, crash the party, but uh, for me, that's not what the day was about. The day was about people coming together. Ha it happened all over the world, watching the movies together, really enjoying this uh, 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 common nostalgia for a great uh, franchise. I mean, I, I liked I liked that they did all these kind of tie-ins. I mean, obviously, sometimes they take it too far. Yeah. I would even consider buying one of those cool Pepsi things because, again, I'm obsessed with the movie. But why is uh, geek culture so easy to manipulate into uh, buying some of this stuff? Uh, that's a millions <laughs> dollar question. Um, I don't know. I think that uh, geeks want to show off their geek geek. Uh, and that's why they'll put a lot of money into it. Uh, they'll put a lot of money into showing people I'm a geek. Uh, I'll, uh, now there's the uh, new shoes, the Nike shoes that can uh, lay themselves. Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. No, <laughs> uh, uh, Nikes are uh, pushing it now. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's it. it will come to the market next year. Yeah. Uh, and it will cost a lot of money. I promise you, a lot of money. And geeks will buy them. But tell me, wouldn't wouldn't you like to buy them? Like it's, I know it's a lot of money, but you yeah, I think, show I think your... the point is that geeks are really uh, brand loyal. When they love a brand, and it can be a movie or a series or a comic, uh, they're really loyal to it, and it's very easy to convince them to buy more things. You can see what's going on with uh, Star Wars merchandise merchandise at the moment. Uh, it, it's selling like crazy, not to kids. It sells to adults who watched the original trilogy and are really into it now and they will buy all kind of memorabilia and merchandise just because they really love it and love is very easy to exploit as we know <laughs> yeah definitely okay guys the cubs i thought were going to win the world series as marty saw in the future it didn't happen my cubbies lost last night i'm very hurt about it but do you what uh things do you think actually came true uh, or similar things um uh, skype videos um 
you could see uh, the hoverboard is real. The uh, hoverboard nowadays. is becoming real. It's yeah. becoming, yeah. Real. becoming real. Yeah. Yeah. There are a couple of things they did, like uh, uh, fingerprints in order to uh, buy uh, stuff. Uh, that's happening now but the main thing that they didn't see is the cell phone we do a lot of those things that they uh, thought we'll do but we do it with our cell phone and this is something that 30 years uh, ago uh, nobody thought will happen that I, our cell phone will be a i computer. just want to flank delorean and until that happens i really don't care that, that was also my dream i was always hoping for the delorean and in real life i would buy one if i had the money i hear they're very expensive though yeah um, what, uh, what else, guys? Uh, what other things from the week? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was really dominated by Back to the Future, I think. I mean, it, it, it's a real phenomenon because the movie is, is, is so old, you know? And I think it's really uh, cool to see a techy, geeky movie that survives this time gap and people just really enjoy uh, it together. And it was a special week and uh, we're happy week. that we are part of it and we're here back in the good old 1985 or 2015, whatever time you want. We'll be back here next week. Enjoy, folks.